everyone, this is Tim with Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. It's Wednesday, May 12th, schedule day, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the schedule will be out. I guarantee it'll be leaked before then. We'll do a video, breaking down the schedule, giving the, the way too early overview. We have the big stream, of course, on the 16th, which is going to, we're going to be announcing who is going to be taking over the Online Big Blue channel. I'm still going to be doing videos on the channel, so don't anyone disappear and unsubscribe and all that other, or unbell us or all that other crap. I'm always going to be around. I'm going to be doing videos. I I decide I'm going to do videos a day up until the 16th, and um, then we'll see how many videos I do a week. But I wanted to get into the Giants offense because the Giants offense was putrid last year. And Tony, of course, as we drafted out of Florida, is going to be, an I believe, an integral part of the offense. And, and will he succeed being that integral part? I don't know. Nobody knows. And nobody knows how big his role is going to be. And I love it because uh, I was reading an article yesterday, and they called him an important chess piece to the Jason Garrett's offense. And we have broken down Jason Garrett's offense ad nauseum. You can go back and watch the videos. If you're going to go, if he's going to run the offense that he ran his first two years as a coordinator before he was promoted to head coach, when, uh, what's his name? What's his name? Wayne Phillips got fired. It's going to be a motion offense predicated off the old Air Coriel offense, which he was highly successful in running. And everyone forgets that Jason Garrett didn't call plays for like seven years. He had two or three offensive coordinators. I think Lenahan was the last one he had. The kid that looks like he's 12 years old. Everyone to me looks like they're 12 years old or 15 years old. <laughs> when you reach a certain age, you look at people anyone they're 30, like, what are you, 12? But it's going to be interesting how he is going to use Tony in this offense, in this Giants offense. Because I made a joke yesterday that, um, you know, especially with the defense that, you know, teams have film now on the Giant defense. And they're going to use that film to figure out substitutions and exactly how the defense is going to work and what players they're going to use at certain times. And I say, you know what? I'm very happy that teams have a lot of film on the Giants offense because it was just so bad. I don't think we're using anything from that offense. But Tony is going to have to be a part of this. I made no qualms about it. I would have preferred to have drafted Bateman because I think Bateman is a better route runner. I, he does have some concentration issues in dropping the ball. Both of them have about the same speed to me. Both of them are, are, are pretty similar in size. I mean, there's, there's not a big disparaging between the two of them. There's not a big discrepancies. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's, it is what it is. But I think Garrett and I think Garrett and Judge, Joe Judge, looked at this as, okay, we can use him as the X factor. And I always, I always, I always hold him to comparison to Percy Harvin. To me, Percy Harvin had a better, a better totality of his career at Florida. He he had a good couple seasons early on, and then kind of you know he had the migraine issues and. He went to Seattle, he went to Jets, and he was out of league, and then he came back into the league. So he, but he was a good X factor. He could do it all. Yeah, he can come out of the backfield. He can line up in the slot. You can put him on the outside. He could return punts. He could return kickoffs. And that's what Tony's going to have to do. Tony is going to have to be, and I do like, I do like the comparison as, as an interchangeable chess piece in this offense. He's going to have to be used in multitudes of ways because I don't think he's right now, and I'm saying right now, I don't think he, he, his skill set totally translates to an everyday NFL wide receiver. He's going to be a slot guy. He, next year, if he progresses, he is going to replace Sterling Shepard. He is going to, that we're going to get out from underneath the Shepard contract, and he's going to take over for Shepard in the slot. But in his rookie season, it's, it is a lot to ask any rookie to come into an offense that was so horrid and make, an, and make a dramatic impact. But if you take a look at what he can do, you can keep him in the slot. And I think that's where he's going to excel. But you can use him in motion quite extensively and move him out of the slot, you know, out, you know, out onto the edge. You know, you know, sitting back in the edge and going back in the slot. You can move him in motion out of the backfield. You can put him in the backfield. You could hand him off in the backfield. And I think that he that's where he's gonna have to find his niche. You're gonna have you you want to make him be the player 
that defensive coordinators are going to have to keep tabs on every time he comes in the game. That you're going to have to know where, and that's what you want him to be. You want, D, you want defensive coordinators worried, where is Tony lining up? Is he going to take a direct, is he going to take a handoff? Is he going to take a direct snap? Is he going to go into motion out of the backfield? Is he going to line up in the slot? Is he going to line up on the outside? Is he going to go from the outside and line back up into the slot or, you know, or, or anything, or, or is he going to be in the backfield and then line up and all of a sudden end up on the outside? You don't know. And we're going to, like I said, are we going to pitch the ball to him? We're going to run the sweep to him. You want coordinators to be focused on what they need to do when he is in the game, because that is going to cause a disruption. Now, this is going to work in two folds. It could work, and then you really need to worry about him, or you could go, or it could not work, and you'll go a couple, three, four weeks, and then teams will start just ignoring him. I think it's going to be the latter. I, I don't think team. I shouldn't say that. I don't think teams are going to ignore him. I think he's going to do enough and allow Jason Garrett to to use him in a way that he is going to be successful. I personally think that he is going to line up. I don't think he's going to line up strictly in the slot, but I think he's going to be mainly when he lines up, I think it's either going to be in the slot or in the backfield. Because you're going to have to hope that Darius and Kenny G are, are going to, are going to really take over those two positions on the, on the outside. And you got to hope that Dante Pettis can show something. Dante Pettis showed a little something at the end of the year. It took him a while to get into the system. And, you know, there, there was always rumors coming out of San Francisco that he wasn't, you know, the brightest bulb in the bunch, which is okay that, you know, he, they gave him tons of opportunities in San Francisco and he never really, uh, he never really grabbed onto those opportunities, which is fine because of the fact that, you know, it, it's a fresh start for him. I'm not worried about any of the other Victor Cruz or 2.0s. And I, and I find it interesting, though, that he could potentially, Tony, that is, be an even huge or, or bigger or larger asset to Evan Ingram. Because a lot of times when Daniel Jones was looking for someone, it was always Evan Ingram. I don't know why. Why do you always build up a quarterbacks always build up a rapport with a certain player? But the problem is, do you really want to build up a, a rapport with a guy who can't catch the ball? I mean, if you're a tight end and you can't catch the ball, I'm probably not throwing it to you. And teams, especially towards the end of the season, kind of figured out, you know what? They're probably going Ingram. Because they're not hitting Darius. Golden Tate had his moments. But you know what? For all the bluster that Golden Tate had about, about not getting the ball, he wasn't wrong. There were plenty of times that he and Darius were open that Daniel Jones either just missed or didn't see him. But having a receiver like Tony will allow Evan Ingram to, and even Kyle Rudolph to find openings in that secondary. They can camp out in the middle of the field. Because if you have him, if you have Tony in motion and you're running him to the outside, you know the safety and more likely is going to follow. Because they're going to be worried about keeping, keeping Tony in front of them and not letting him get past you know, get past the safety. And if you got a guy, you know, if you got it, I'm not, I'm not picking on him, but you know, you got a guy like Landon Collins, you saw what cone did to Collins, uh, back when he was, when he was, when uh, he was with the giants and they, we played Chicago, man, he, 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 like I said, he beat, he beat Landon like he stole something and teams are going to have to work. If his speed, if Tony's speed translates well to on field and he has that ability, Teams are going to be more concerned at times about not letting Tony get deep than they are going to be concerned about what's in the middle of the field. And you're going to have to put a linebacker then on Evan Ingram. Now, if you put a linebacker on Evan Ingram, I'm going to take Evan Ingram every day against the linebacker. And especially some of these, now, now some of the, now of course, like Smith out of Tampa and a couple other places, you, you know, you're probably not going to, but nine out of, or I would say seven out of 10 times in, in an average NFL linebacker, Evan Ingram can win that battle. And then you throw into the mix that you got Kyle Rudolph. And like I said, Tony will be an interesting prospect if he is used correctly. And I think Jason Garrett will find a way to do it. 
We will do another video today when the schedule comes out. We'll do a breakdown to see what we think the schedule is. It looks like what the record may be. And it's going to be the way too early breakdown. But we'll, we'll highlight some fun games. And don't forget, we also have uh, a new episode of NFL Talk from Across the Pond and back on every place that, uh, I, you know, that you find podcasts. Good show. Or you can just go to onlinebigblue.com. We have NFL cross talk, uh, cross the NFL talk from across the pond and back, and also we have um, uh, all nonsense sports, my other podcast that I do. So, but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting today when that schedule comes out. Stay tuned for it. And again, this is Tim with the Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you can like, you can subscribe. If you're not believing in the means, that'd be awesome.